Hey, Mr. Ferrante here. Today we're going to add to Image Lab's built-in menu. For example, you can see that there's a file menu that has open, save, and quit. There's a filter menu that has whatever filters you have in your filter folder. And what we want to do is add an extra menu item right between the two. So let's close this down and go check that out. Open up the imagelab.java source file and scroll down to where you see menu items being created right now, which for me, it's line 66. It may be similar for you or different, but it'll be around the same item. So after this section right here, let's add the things needed to create a new menu. So there are three layers to this. Let me run this again. First of all, in Java, there's a menu bar, and this entire thing is the menu bar. Inside that, you have menus. And so here you can see there's the file menu, which is right there. And then inside of that, I'll put it in green, would be the menu items. So it might say open item, uh, save item, quit item, and so on. And so you can see that here. This is a menu item inside, or sorry, that's a menu. Inside are menu items. So again, three letter, three layers. The entire menu bar, inside of which are individual menus. And then inside that are individual menu items. All right, so the menu bar is created for us. We have to add two things. We have to add a menu itself and then menu items inside the menu. So let's go ahead and go do that. All right, so we have a menu bar created up here. You can see it, J menu bar is called M bar, makes sense. We've got to do this. Let's make a, I'm just going to copy this line and paste it down here. We're going to add our own menu called photo mosaic to do all the special and fun photo mosaic things for this chapter. So I'll call this Instead of file, I'll call it photo mosaic menu. And then this will be the text that's displayed. I'll call it photo mosaic. All right, check. Next thing is we need to add J menu items inside of that J menu. So to do that, you can see again up here, we could just copy this, but it's not hard to type out. So let's type it out. J menu item. And I'll call this. Um, item one, that's not a good name, but for now you can you can customize it later on. So item one equals new J menu item. And then you want the text that will be displayed here. So for now, just say item number one. And again, you'll need to go back and customize these to match the purpose that you're doing. So, all right, next thing is to add these to the actual menu. So, so far, just because you've made an object doesn't mean it's been added to be displayed. So we need to add this menu um, object to the menu bar. And to do that, the menu bar has an add function. You can see it here. This is adding the file menu to the menu bar. In our case, we're going to say, hey, menu bar dot add, and then our photo mosaic menu. And as soon as I do that, if I run this already, you can see that there's already a middle menu called photo mosaic, and it's been added to our menu bar. But there's nothing inside because I haven't added anything to the actual menu. So let's go and do that. So to the photo mosaic menu, we'll say dot add and we'll add our item one. Again, we should really rename that probably sooner than later. Now, if you run this again, you've got the photo mosaic menu and inside you've got item one. Let's add a couple items. So we've got item one. Let's add item to number two. For now, we'll just go with the default names, item two, and then add this down here. Now you've got two items, menu items, added to the J menu. And they still don't do anything. So if I run this again, it's great that I have two things in there, item one, item two. But if you select them, they don't do anything because there's no code to say when you select an item, run this method or this piece of code. So here's the next part of how to do that. All right, each GUI item in Java, um, well, most of them have an action listener that listens for events. And you need to attach an action listener to the menu items. So here's how to do that. First, we need to build an action listener. So I'll start with this. I'll back up. Suppose we had an action listener defined already, then you'd do this. You'd say, hey, item number one dot add action listener. And inside the parameters, you have to specify 
which object is going to be listening for events that when you click it, it should respond. And so let's go and create an action listener and then pass it in. Maybe its name will be Bob, I don't know. But let's go ahead and do that. So down here, they're doing this a different way than what we're gonna do. This is a little bit more cryptic and we're gonna do it a more straightforward way. So it turns out inside of a class, like right here I could type a method, right? Like public, you know, void, new method, whatever. So in the same place that you would normally type a method, you can type a private inner class. So I'm gonna do this and say private class, my action listener, and then implements action listener. Drink. All right, so this is a private class that's accessible only within this class itself. And we're just using it kind of as a, a local class to be um, run by the button. And so action listener, as you can see here, it's an interface. If I open this thing up, here's the API for it. So interface, action listener, lots of things implemented. And to be an action listener, you must have this one method, action performed. This is the method that gets called when you select that menu item. So let's let Eclipse do the work and say, hey, Eclipse, please add the, um, add the method. Oh, you know what? I think I already did this before and didn't remove my code. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I did, okay, sorry. So I had the code in there before by, from a previous run of this. All right, so now that I have private class, my action listener can call us what you want. It's your own custom class. Let's let Eclipse add the required methods to be part of this interface. And it did it, it's called action performed. So now inside here, we'll just, for now, we'll say um, sys out and then hello there. All right, cool. So now we have a custom class. We can create a my action listener object and tell our menu item that this object, whatever one it is, will be listening for button presses. So let's go back up to our code. And here, let's make a my action listener. So we'll say my action listener, we'll call him Bob equals new my action listener. And there you go. Now you have a action listener object that's custom and it will listen for uh, item presses. So to item number one, which is the first menu item, we'll say add action listener, Bob. So Bob is our listener. And whenever you select that item from the menu, it'll run the code down here in my action listener. So it's gonna run, if I can find it again, it'll run this method when we click the button or the, the menu item and it should say hello there. So let's try this out. Let me run this thing. So we have photo mosaic. If I select item number one, then it says hello there. Item number two is not attached to anything so it still doesn't do anything, but at least item one is working. So let's go back now and clean things up. All right, so we have two menu items. Let's go ahead and add another listener for, in fact, we can use the same listener actually. So for item two, item two dot add action listener, Bob can be the listener for that too. The thing is right now, Bob's gonna do the same action no matter which one you pass in. So we're gonna have to get around that. So right now, if I press run, and I select item one or item two, it's gonna run the same code. So that's not very convenient. We need to know, did we click item one or did we click item two? So by default, menu items have an action string attached to them, a command string. And the command string is the text of the label itself. So to get around this and detect which item we're pressing, then where's our method? Right here, we can ask this action event what the action command is. So we can say if e dot 
git action command if this dot equals item one again this is the same as the the text of the menu so in this case we'll print out hello there item one and then in case two if we select item two then we'll know that it's item two so let's run this again and see if we get specific action for each menu item so photo mosaic item one so it knows it's item one this time and then item two it knows it's item two and that's perfect another way to do this instead of action commands is you could have said e dot get source this would give you the actual component but in our case it wouldn't work because these components are local variables inside of this method and so if they were attributes, you could actually refer to the object itself and say, hey, is this object item number one? But item one is private, it's a local variable, and you can't access it from down here. So we're choosing to do action strings instead. All right, at that point, that, that's pretty much what you need for the assignment. Um, you really need to change this from item one into something more useful. So you'll have to be renaming these things for, that, um, for the assignment but that's the basics on how you can add your own custom menus and custom items and get responses from them. All right, have a great day, bye.